Welcome to Next Steps to Leadership with your host, Dr. Stephen Oliver. In each episode, we invite experts to share their passion and their leadership journey to help you in your next steps. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our website, hrcvision.com. Now here's the host of Next Steps to Leadership, Dr. Stephen Oliver. Well, hello and welcome to everyone. Welcome to my podcast, um, Next Steps to Leadership. Um, As the intro said, I am Dr. Stephen Oliver, or known as Dr. O, and welcome. Welcome to the podcast. The goal of the podcast is to help you in your next step to leadership. So I have invited um, a series of executives, consultants, professors, and creative individuals to come in and tell a little bit about their story in leadership and what they do to help you in in your step as you go forward. So welcome to all. I'm very, very excited to welcome Dr. Douglas Clayton or the film doc. Really, really excited to have him today. Um, Dr. Clayton is many things, all right? (laughs) After reading his bio today, I am even more impressed even though I've known him for a few years. So Dr. Clayton is a former senior vice president of human capital and vice president of human resources for a large technology company. And we'll talk about that in a moment. He is also a film documentary producer, director. Um, He is an author and um, he's published and he has some award-winning films, short films that he has created. And he does consulting in film leadership or how films can help in leadership. And he'll tell you more about that. So really, really glad to have him today. Um, Welcome, Dr. Clayton, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Stephen. Thank you very much for having me. That That was such a nice introduction. I appreciate that. Well, I have I have even a little bit more of an introduction. So, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so just uh, real quickly, Dr. Clayton's uh, career. He worked for um, SES. Um, he's a former vice president of SES, which is a satellite communication service provider. And what they do, and he'll tell you more specifically, um, they do. Um, intelligent networks of satellite and ground infrastructure and they manage and deliver high performance video and data solutions virtually everywhere on the planet they've got about 70 satellites um, around around the globe and so he'll tell you more about that and then dr clayton um, is the founder of two different organizations um, the founder of film doc where he did some award-winning um, documentaries and then the founder and CEO of Leadership Filmworks. And he does a lot of consulting on global transformation and culture um, and helping individual leaders to um, you know, be engaged and maximize their, their strengths. So um, he's very busy and doing a lot. <laughs> so there's a little more of the introduction. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Yes, he also has his doctorate of um, education from the University of Pennsylvania, which is a combination of the Wharton School of Business and the Graduate School of Education. Same same type of doctorate that I have. Um, And then he has his Master's of Human Resource Development from Villanova University. So real quickly, as I do with most of my podcasts, is I just kind of let everybody know how we got connected. And then I have a series of questions I'd like to ask um, um, Dr. Clayton. So um, I graduated from this uh, wonderful doctoral program um, a, a couple of years before um, Dr. Clayton did. And so um, he was just embarking upon his dissertation and he was the, connected to me about the literature review and how to get started. So we met for coffee and I just gave some pointers on, on you know, how to do the literature review and get started. Well, I, his his dissertation was a lot more renowned than mine, but <laughs> at, least, at least we had that introduction and got to know each other. And then we got to know, know each other a few years later in a really interesting activity. So we were both on the board of what's called the Penn CLO, Chief Learning Officer, um, and that's uh, the title of our doctoral program. It's a, it's a doctorate in adult education and business. And so we were on the um, 
on the board of that just to keep things going. And we decided to do a, a service project. We really wanted to give back to the community. And so I was helping to coordinate that. And what we wanted to do is take some of our alumni and even current students and get them to be coaches to leaders in a company. So we were having a hard time finding a company to um, you know, connect with. Well, um, Doug got us connected to two great nonprofits in the state of New Jersey. Um, one is called um, Anchor House. And what it does is it um, helps disenfranchised um, teenagers who may have been um, you know, thrown out of their homes or have drug problems or crime problems. And it's a place where they can go stay and live and get back on track. And so what we did is we um, connected with the um, managers of that company and gave, and we had some of our leaders give con um, coaching. The other was a hospice and healthcare organization. Um, and so what we did is there was quite a few healthcare nurses and uh, clinicians, and we were um, connecting some of those leaders. And this was all because of Dr. Doug. Doug connected us to these organizations, and we were so thankful for his connecting. He was a coach, and it was a pretty successful program. So that's where we reconnected again and have stayed connected since then. So I still can't thank you enough for that <laughs> years later, but that was a great thing. Uh, it was a real privilege to be involved with it. Stephen, so thanks for including me back then. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I don't know if you recall, but a couple of years later, well, I'm, I'm sure you recall a couple of years later, um, we conducted the same um, program for several organizations in Camden, New Jersey. Um, and yes. that was a, another big success because of people like you and Gene Larkin and John Gillis and some others. So, Yes, definitely. I remember coming to one of the sessions there at that organization. That was mm -hmm. pretty powerful. So giving giving back is just part of um, what our organ our you know uh, alumni and our college and our degree program is about. Mm -hmm. um, so um, now we're, here we are with the podcast. So let's get started. So again, welcome, Dr. Clayton. I'm really glad to have us. So just real briefly, what what are you up to these days? Tell, tell us a little bit about what you're up to, which is a well, lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, Stephen. I mean, on a personal note, we moved from this central New Jersey area about two years ago to Venice, Florida. So what I'm up to is a lot of sunshine down here, uh, mm -hmm. swimming, bicycling, working out. It's really, really healthy down here. We live in a very friendly community. Um, a lot of people from New Jersey and New York live here from the Midwest. Very, very transient in that regard. Um, you know, it's a real nice mix of, of folks from all different ages. So it's a lot of fun. Um, but I do get back to New Jersey a lot. In fact, I was up in that area two weeks ago and had a chance to visit, you know, my uh, sisters and brother, one of my sons and two of my grandchildren. So uh, I'm always looking for great excuses to get back up into that New Jersey area for business and then combine it with some pleasure. Um, and, and down here, I'm a member of a film club. It's kind of like a book club, but instead of, you know, reading a book, you would watch a movie and then you come prepared to discuss it. Uh, and there's some really smart people who have great points of view and great observations of films. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, just, you know, just trying to enjoy life as much as possible. In addition to having a great deal of fun with consulting, you know, in, in March of 2021, I retired from SES uh, on March 31st. On April the 1st, I began consulting for them the following day. So I created an organization, an LLC called um, Film Doc LLC, which I also used um, as an LLC when I made two documentaries. And then about a year later, I created another LLC called uh, Leadership Filmworks, where the focus is uh, much more on leadership development and just been having a blast with that. So that's that's what I've been up to. So you um, retired, but very busy. So <laughs> very busy. You know, it's funny. My wife said, you're not retired, you're rewired. And I like right. that a lot. So well, you're doing some great things and please send that sunshine and all that health up this way as well. I'm glad that you yeah. will come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so before we go into your film and your organizations um, and your award-winning films, do you mind just mm -hmm. telling us just a little briefly about SES, Satellite Communication Services, and what you did in human capital and in human resources? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, SES, if you were to translate it into English from Luxembourgish, um, is roughly translated to the 
Society for European Satellites. It's a Luxembourg-based company, um, and they they acquired a satellite business from GE when I was working for GE. So back in 2001, I stayed on with them as an HR manager, and I had a you know just a really lovely career with some wonderful people at the company, and uh, was able to you know eventually work in very very different positions. It's very eclectic. HR is a very eclectic. Uh, career, you know, you can do everything, and and I did. I had the great fortune to, you know, work in compensation and benefits and recruiting, etc. My favorite thing, though, was when I was running learning and development, and that was about the time when I was going to University of Pennsylvania for our doctoral degree. Right. Um, so SES really liked that a lot, and they were very supportive of me, um, you know, um, pursuing that education. And that was really where I had a great deal of fun. We did things like, you know, make movies to um, to educate employees. These were parodies of mainstream characters such as James Bond. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that to teach people about our, you know, fairly dry topic of um, job competencies that we were getting ready to roll out. We had a blast doing it. Uh, we, you know, always featured employees and leaders at, at all levels. The employees were involved with writing the script. We'd hire an outside production company, so it was very professional looking. And the feedback was just terrific. People loved it. We did another one uh, on company values, and it was called The Godfather of Values. So we right. featured Don Corleone, um, okay. you know, having uh, meetings with the heads of his of, of, of his five families, um, and each family member would talk about a different value. So we did probably, I think it was five various five parodies over a period of six or seven years and it was always a big hit so um that's mainly because i just love movies so much and i knew i figured mm -hmm. if we did it right that people would react in a really positive way and there would be a deeper learning uh which is the feedback that we got from folks and that's so fantastic and i think film and video um really connect to people the stories that are told mm -hmm. yeah people can learn better yes. Um, in our doctoral program, one of the, they call them blocks, but it was a semester, we mm -hmm. had a technology block and, you know, film and video and YouTube um, were accentuated um, in that block. And um, mm -hmm. that was my favorite block. And I got to make a really great um, YouTube video with a colleague. And mm -hmm. so um, um, I imagine that's kind of where you, you um, part of where you got connected to this. Um, it is, yeah. That 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 was a major influence. Um, Amit Das was the teacher of that block who mm -hmm. focused on film as a learning technology. I mean, there were other technologies as well. You know, there were business simulations and things like that. But film was the big one for that year, which resonated with me, and I had a great time. I I did a five minute film of my mm -hmm. beautiful wife uh, making pancakes or Russian pancakes. And it was kind <laughs> so of nice. a big hit. Um, and then, and then we needed to do a longer film as, you know, to finish out the block. And, uh, so it, it was, it was great fun. And in doing that, um, I started to think about the possibility of making a real film, you know, not a mm -hmm. corporate video or not something for the pen, but I, uh, ended up, you know, um, a couple of folks and I had an idea to make a short documentary. So we did, and it was called, ended up becoming called um, Dovare for Camden. And mm -hmm. we filmed a couple of folks who grew up in Camden, moved away, came back. Um, they turned what was an, an abandoned bar into the mm -hmm. city's only live theater. We entered it into the New Jersey Film Festival, not thinking that we would ever get accepted into such a, a strong film festival, but we were shocked. We were accepted and we won an award an award. Um, there were about 200 people showed up to the screening. It was a blast and it was just so much fun. It was a lot of hard work to make mm -hmm. a film, but that's where I really, um, I'll say, cut my teeth making a film um, independent from a company or from a school assignment. And then just jumping ahead a little bit, you made another award winning film, um, The Heart of Camden. And it's about Father mm -hmm. Michael Doyle, who was a priest, a poet, and an activist for Camden. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, just for anyone who is, um, hang on one second, my phone there, let me turn it off, sorry. Um, anyone who may not know, um, Camden, New Jersey mm -hmm. is 
um, right across the river from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and you know, almost in, su- in South Jersey. Um, so mm-hmm. we're talking about Camden, that's where we are. Um, but, um, um, you know, th- if you don't mind telling us a little bit about this film, I mean, this is sure. very, very powerful. Um, I just rewatched it the other day. It was very, very powerful. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I had some wonderful people involved with it. So um, what happened was at the New Jersey Film Festival that evening, there were people there from Camden, um, and one of them is a fellow named Carlos Morales, who was the new executive director of a wonderful organization called the heart of Camden, um, and they okay. do wonderful things and um, for the citizens of mainly the uh, the waterfront south area of Camden. Father Doyle was in the audience as well. Um, and then about a year later, Carlos called me up and said, you know, I watched this film, that, that the uh, Divided for Camden, and you seem to have an affinity for Camden, certainly an understanding of it, and we'd like to, you know, create a some recordings of our uh, rock star priest, Father Michael Doyle. And this was the idea of Anne and Mark Beata. They are the founders of Beata Nursing. They were very, very fond of uh, Father Doyle, extremely generous folks who have helped out Camden and many other areas as well with their treasure. Um, and the idea of, a, of recording him was theirs. So I said, be happy to to get involved with it, um, hired a professional production company, um, Art C out of South Jersey, a couple of wonderful filmmakers, Bill Herrin and Frank Weiss. And uh, we began, you know, kind of structuring what the story could look like. Um, and we very quickly understood that there was much more to this than just simply recording this wonderful human being, Michael Doyle, but that there's a real story behind it. So uh, we started to, you know, map it out, we begin to see a narrative arc developing, a beginning and ending. We're being introduced to amazing people who have done some incredible things in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, Former Mayor Dana Red, um, Chief of Police Scott Thompson, Pepe Paperno, many other folks. Um, So we interviewed them and put the movie together. And uh, we had a wonderful fellow named Sterling Brown who wrote um, the narrative, the narration, and uh, we were able to get Martin Sheen to be the, the narrator. And that added a certain weight to the project. Yeah. Also. And uh, and the way we got him is I simply called him one day. I was able to get his phone number through the church because he was friendly with Michael Doyle, and he narrated another wonderful documentary called The Poet of Poverty, made by Sean Doherty. Mm-hmm. And um, so I called him. He called me back. It's so down to earth. And he said, I'm in. I said, well, you know, great. I said, would you like to see um, any clips or would you like to see anything? He said, nope. He said, I trust you. I love Michael Doyle. I'm in. So that was it. So we filmed him or we didn't film him. We, you know, he did the um, the voiceover in California. And it was right before COVID. So traveling felt a little bit risky. Um, I, I offered to go to California to be with him in the studio. Not that he needed me there. Right. Um, but but it would have been a great experience more for me, that's for sure. And he said, you know, let's just have you join by by Zoom. So Frank Weiss and I, we, I'll say, you know, quote unquote, directed Martin Sheen mm-hmm. <laughs> t- to the extent that you would direct someone like him. But he was so collaborative, Stephen. It was amazing. You know, he would give us five different versions of each line. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable how hard he worked. And he did it pro bono. Um, he mm-hmm. does, you know. He'll do some movies each year for free just to help out a project. And um, he was so lovely to work with and uh, very, very kind, very generous. And we've remained um, in contact. You know, we talk every, you know, maybe a couple times a year and we'll write back and forth to each other. And uh, he's always very interested to know how the film is doing. So that's really why we talk is I'll give him a call to give him an update. So. Yeah, that's fantastic working with him. And then mm. just, just the story of uh, Father Doyle. I mean, not only being a mm. priest, but you know, um, people may know the history of Camden or not, but it's one of those industrial cities yeah. that declined and mm-hmm. got a lot of poverty and a lot of crime and a lot of things that are not great today. But it was a really powerful um, industrial city right across from Philadelphia, which was the same. And so just his story of, of activism and really helping disenfranchise folks there is, is really powerful. 
it's very powerful. You know, it's a story of love, of unconditional love, of, of never ending love. I mean, you think about Catholic priests, right? And the way that the Catholic church operates, um, it's very typical. Um, you know, the vast majority of priests will be transferred, you know, every few years to a different parish, a different town. But yet he, he, he stayed, he refused to leave and he stayed for 50 plus years in that one area. And, um, you know, You've been to Camden and where he he stayed, it was the conditions were just incredibly um, bad. Mm -hmm. Lots of murders, um, you know, incredible crime numbers, um, et cetera. But he stayed because he 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 felt a certain, you know, um, commitment, I think, and, you know, and to help. And he was extremely modest. He would never take any credit for anything. Uh, he would always, you know, uh, give credit to the people around him. And you know he was he was quite uh, quite an inspiration. I I got to know him um, while we were filming, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so impressed with his just his warmth and his wisdom, uh, which is from a lot of years of experience. And he's highly educated. Uh, he is a poet, um, and the way he tells stories is just you know he's from Ireland. You know he was born and raised in Ireland. He was 25 years old. That's when he came to. America after he finished his seminary studies. Um, so he always has this Irish sense of humor about him. Uh, he's a great Irish storyteller. So a wonderful person. And that's really what, you know, Film Doc LLC is about is, you know, both documentaries are stories that we've been told by those who view them are very inspiring stories. Um, and that's what I'm interested in is using film to inspire people. Well, that leads me to my next question is, what are some of the stories that you choose? Certainly inspirational, but, but you know, what do you look for in a story that you choose to either make a film or promote it or create it? Yeah, um, look for mainly inspiration, you know, uh, some a story that will inspire people to maybe do their bit to do good. Um, and there were a lot of stories out in the world, I mean, Sometimes the world seems a wee bit dark, right? But there are a lot of wonderful people out there doing great, great, great things and uh, from all walks of life. So that's that's really what I look for is something that's inspiring, something that's unique, that's an original type of a story, like these two fellas who turned the one guy's grandfather's abandoned bar into the city's only uh, live professional theater. I mean, it's extraordinary story, mm -hmm. you know, very inspiring. Why would they do that? And the same thing with Michael Doyle. Why would he spend so much of his life in this one area of, of an impoverished city um, dealing with all the things that you need to deal with? Uh, why would he do that where he could have taken a much easier path, you know? So mm -hmm. that's great. Um, let me just ask an another side of this, um, Doug. Mm -hmm. what, what do you see as some of the challenges and making films and filming, editing and trying to tell the story? Any, any challenges in that? Oh yeah, a lot. Um, first of all, you know, it's great to surround yourself with wonderful people, which which I've always had the blessing of doing that, that's for sure. Um, and it's, um, you know, being truthful, being honest with the story, you know, whatever you discover, that's really what you need to present. Um, and um, there's the pre-production stage, which is all about, you know, framing what you think the story might be. And then there's the actual production piece, filming and, you know, the sound, what I've learned is sound is just as important as what you see as the yeah. video, as the film, et cetera. And then there's the post-production, which is, I call like the Michelangelo or the Da Vinci stage, right. which is where you turn into an artist with the, um, with the editing. And so I had a wonderful edit editor on this last film, Frank Weiss, just, just a real artist. Um, yeah, so that's, those are the three stages, you know, looking for a good story. I took a course with the great Albert Mazels. He's considered the father of American documentary filmmaking. He passed away about five years ago, but in, at NYU, I, I spent an afternoon with him with a few other folks. It was a real privilege. And he said two things that stayed with me. Number one, when he makes a documentary, he falls in love with the character, which seemed like a like an, un, an unusual thing to me. It just, I didn't understand it. But, but as I made two documentaries, I understood what he meant. 
it's about respect of those characters to tell their story right. You know, not to manipulate anything, but to be really honest about the story. And you know, I kind of I did fall in love with Michael Doyle with with his goodness and, and his kindness. Um, so that's one thing he said. The other thing he said is that when you make a documentary, you know, as you're looking through that lens, uh, you know, always have this eye looking right. somewhere else because that's where the exciting story will surface. And so that's the other part of of making a documentary is you know looking for the unexpected um, because that'll often really breathe a lot of life into the existing story. That's fantastic. That's really great to be looking at two different things. Mm -hmm. um, so how about um, filmmaking and leadership? I mean, mm -hmm. your current organization, Leadership Filmworks, you focus on consulting and, um, you know, trying to get leaders developed through the magic of film. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you do in your current organization or one of your organizations and um, um, just a little mm -hmm. bit about how filmmaking connects to leadership? When I started Film Doc. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Leadership Filmworks, um, I was looking for a workshop to create. And my wife said to me, you know, when you think about Michael Doyle, Father Doyle, um, there are a lot of examples of leadership in that movie, in that story. I said, geez, she's actually right about that. So I partnered with a, a with a really good group, with a great colleague, Chris Lemke. And, you know, we started to really examine it very closely for examples of leadership and there was all over the place. So we said, let's try making this um, kind of the foundation of learning, an artistic foundation of learning in a workshop. So we did. So um, the examples that we, you know, notice, I mean, just a few, one of them is Michael Doyle says, you know, communication is everything. It's the key to everything. And, you know, you think about leadership, that's, probably the number one complaint that that we as leaders um, suffer and rightfully so often from our employees is, you know, lack of communication, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's the whole thing around strategy. Um, you know, how do you, you know, how do you approach improving this neighborhood? And, you know, leaders need to be very clear about strategy, creating strategy, execution, right? Leadership, getting things done. And you think about what was done. And there's this one example of how he restored the church. It took them 10 years, which seems like a long time, but he was very patient as a leader. Um, so there are you know, many examples from him. There are many examples from other people, from Mayor Dana Red, um, from chief of, the chief of police, Scott Thompson. He talks about you know, Father Doyle asked him, you know, how did you make a difference in policing in Camden? And he said, we have respect for everyone. So think about that as a leader, right? Mm -hmm. It's important to respect everyone. So there are these messages that are directly linked to leadership. So we've conducted th this workshop. I have two versions of that, of them. You know, one is a, a full day session where we deconstruct the film in the morning. Um, it's a 44 minute film and we do it in two 22 minute pieces and we always link it back to that companies, to that client's mm -hmm. leadership competencies. You know, what are really important, what's important to you as a company? What are your values? And we're constantly connecting it back and looking for examples of that in, in the story. And we always find them, but, but more importantly than, than that is the interaction with the participants where they are saying, this is what I saw in the film and all of that. And this is how it applies to me. Then in the afternoon session, we talk about leadership that's required to make a film. So why do we do that? We do that because what we have found, you know, through our courses at Penn, that's for sure, and other learning and development endeavors throughout the years is when we look at something through a completely different lens. Mm -hmm. So leadership, you know, we can certainly, there are wonderful leadership workshops and examples out there from some great, great, you know, work uh, leadership experts. Um, and if you do it through a different lens, such as the arts, you know, whether it's William Shakespeare and Henry V or what have you, or in this case, Michael Doyle, um, we find that it, it grabs the attention of the audience. They really appreciate us trying to do something different, like show them the film and then have the person who made the film in the class talking about it, but more importantly, connecting all of those dots to what's relevant to them. Okay. And so... Um, so the feedback has been you know, really positive because they say, okay, the afternoon, I didn't expect to think about leadership 
through filmmaking what it's required, but it just helps me to connect those dots because it's very different than being a leader in the corporate world, but yet there are similarities. Then what we do is we send them away for, you know, it could be a month or two months in teams of three, and we ask them to make a micro short, you know, say three to five minutes maximum documentary or film on their inspiring leader. So who inspires them? Um, and then they come back and then we have a film festival and they get to show their films and then we do a filmmaker Q and A and it's great fun. And what we've heard from folks is they learn more about leadership in two ways. One, um, the process of making a film is extremely collaborative. You know, you have to work well with other people to get the film done. So there's a whole leadership thing around that as well. So, and then the other, the second is the leader who they interview, um, the nuggets of wisdom that they get from them, they end up learning more about mm -hmm. leadership just through that as well. Now, most recently, um, we did a half a day session where we did not do the leadership through filmmaking, but we examined the heart of leadership, the heart of Camden film, yeah. the, the Michael right. Doyle story. And it was extraordinary, Stephen. This particular company um, up in the Northeast, a huge company, it's the only company I've ever worked with or have been involved with, or it's the only company who I'm aware of who has the word love as part of their leadership competencies. Oh, and, wow. And it's fantastic. part of their, their values, love and excellence and empathy. And they're actually doing something about it, Stephen. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're teaching their leaders um, about you know why love is important. You know, I shared with them that you know um, Khalil Gibran, the great Lebanese poet, once said, you know, work is love made visible. You know, so if we think about it, right, we should talk to leaders and about employees and to employees about love. And it may sound strange to folks, but like when I read um, up on World War II and some of these incredible battles. And uh, I've read from several generals who said in World War II, that generation who didn't really use the L word much, love. Mm -hmm, right. Um, but they were very clear that they loved their soldiers. They were very, very clear about that um, from a leadership standpoint. But um, getting back to this particular company who has love and empathy and excellence um, in their in their um, uh, values and competencies. Um, they were very, very moved by the program. But I will tell you, I was very moved by the participants, mm -hmm. you know, the challenges that they're faced with. It's in the right. healthcare industry and, you know, the, the extraordinary challenges, you know, life, life and death. So um, they were able to relate to Michael Doyle um, and to people in in the film, it's not a story about love, but um, there is the mention of love in it several times. Mm -hmm. um, so, so any other inspiring things other than love? I mean, we certainly need a lot more love today, especially today. About any other inspiring things that come out of leadership from the discussions that your participants have, and yeah, the that they're looking to their leaders. Great question. Um, so a key message in the part of Camden documentary from Michael Doyle is, mm -hmm. you know, somebody asked him, you know, but what can I do? You know, I'm, I'm just a citizen. I don't have much money. I'm barely scraping by. Surely I can't do anything. He said, but you can. He said, you can do your bit. Just whatever it is, whatever you think you can do, whether it's mm -hmm to keep the front of your house clean or just do your bit. And that becomes a key phrase in the film. Um, and at the end of you know one session that we did in Europe, we had a global group of leaders. Mm -hmm. And many of them afterwards, and when we do the closing round circle, we'll say, you know, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my bit. And there's one example is um, a leader from Israel said, when I go back to Tel Aviv, I'm going to do my bit. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to do something. And sure enough, a month later, I got this wonderful um, email explaining to me what he did in terms of he and his friends. They cleaned up a bunch of garbage and rubbish around a lake. Um, so 
I think that's what 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 people are walking away with is, you know, mm -hmm. how can I? What's the one thing that I can do where I can make a difference, either in the mm -hmm. world, in my community, or within work? And some people are committing to, you know, to doing you know better performance reviews or to doing performance reviews at all and things like that. Um, and other people are committing to doing things that are a bit more, um, you know, um, I'll say a bit more grand in terms of helping a community. You know, there was one participant, um, a Muslim gentleman came up to me afterwards and asked me if I could, if he could have a copy of the DVD because he wanted to show it to his teenage sons as an example of how to live your life in this world. And wow. I was Wonderful. really, really moved by that. And um, yeah, so I think, you know, in summary, I think the highlights are number one, it's really, it's mm -hmm. not about the movie that a few of us made. It's about the story that that people pick up on about this really unique person, Michael Doyle, and about his journey um, of an ordinary person from Ireland to America. He settled in an impoverished city and just would not leave and made a big difference. So that's really what gets to people. And then when they begin to um, to internalize it and you know see, think of examples in their lives and then how maybe they can make a difference, um, it's really very gratifying to us to be involved with something like that. And just to, to promote your film again, um, The Heart of Camden, <laughs> um, <laughs> Father Father Michael Doyle, you can mm -hmm. look at it on YouTube. So I'm giving you a little promotion there. Oh, thank it you. It's wonderful. It will change you. And, um, you know, my heart swelled up and tears came down when I watched some of it. So it was nice. great. Thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate that. Um, just one little technical question. Um, if someone wants to go out and make a film, um, they don't need to buy, you know, a, a massive um, movie camera. They can do it on their 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 cell phone, correct? Or what? What do you suggest if someone wants to go out and do a short film, whether yeah. it be a or anything else? Mm -hmm. So the story is everything. That's 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 number one. So you know, just just whatever, but just start filming, and then a story will emerge. You know, it, but yeah, certainly, you know, use a handheld mobile phone device. Um, they're fantastic. There are actual films, you know, like pro professional feature length movies that are being made with mobile phones. Um, and then, you know, keep in mind that that the sound is just as important as 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 what people are seeing. So um, I think the microphones in the phone in the phones are fine. But, you know, you might want to upgrade to something, you know, maybe $50 or $100 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the filming piece and then the post production, the editing, you know, you can do a perfectly fine job with something as I'll say relatively simple as iMovie. Um, mm -hmm. And Stephen, just to let you know, in terms of editing, what what I discovered in June is um, I was doing a workshop for University of Pennsylvania at their Wharton San Francisco campus in June with the doctoral program that we graduated from. And the assignment was for folks to go out into the streets of San Francisco and to film and to kind of pick up, you know. The vibe of San Francisco. Then they had to come back, and that afternoon they they needed to edit. So they did. I mean, each team was thinking about four teams of five people, um, and all of them made a film, and they were really impressive, especially for how little time they had. But check this out: one group um, discovered that by using artificial intelligence, that they could create ChatGPT the narrative, the narration of their film. <laughs> wow. It was such a great learning for me. Right. And then another another team actually used artificial intelligence for editing. So you know yeah. to actually piece the film together it was amazing. So now what we tell folks in in our sessions and these workshops is feel free to use artificial intelligence to help you make it. So it, it's just becoming easier and, and easier to make to make a film. It's just incredible what. Um, AI is helping us do, but mm -hmm. again, the, the filming and storytelling is so powerful. Yeah, um, we're almost upon Oscar time. Any predictions? There's some great movies out there: Oppenheimer, mm. Barbie, <laughs> yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, great stories out there. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm in a. As I may have mentioned, I'm in a film club down here, and we've watched almost all of the films. In fact, my wife and I just watched Barbie last week. I think it's a terrific movie. It's a lot of fun and delightful, but I think uh, if I had to bet money, I would probably bet on Oppenheimer because yeah. the story is, you know, it's a meaningful story. It's made so well by 
Christopher Nolan and the music by Hans Zimmer and the acting. It's, it's, it's just the whole package. It's so. really powerful, yes. So in winding down, Dr. Clayton, um, any final recommendations or suggestions on how filmmaking can connect to leadership? Um, I'm happy to discuss it with anyone if you do have any questions. Um, but no, just, uh, you know, just, just, you know, look for both the obvious and then keep your other eye open for what may not be so obvious. And you'll find great examples of, you know, love, of, of life, of, um, you know, poignant examples that may be a bit painful, but very meaningful and important. And you'll find great examples of leadership. Leadership is all around us. Mm -hmm. Yes, I really like what you said. Keep one eye focused on the film and then the other on other things that are going on around you and are, you know, yeah. what's happening outside. So yeah. I can't thank you enough, um, Dr. Douglas Clayton or the film doc, um, director, producer, um, documentary specialist, award-winning documentary um, and consultant and teacher. And it's just, I thank you so much for coming to the podcast today. It's, it's been a pleasure and learned a lot from you. So thank you so much, Doug. It was a real pleasure, Stephen. Thank you for having me. Um, I love talking to you about this topic and um, all the best to you with your podcast. I think it's fantastic what you're doing. Great, thank you. And so thank you to all of you who are watching the podcast. We're really glad to have you. Um, if we can do anything, if I can do anything in my consulting HRC vision to help you in your next step, or if you wanna connect to Dr. Doug Clayton, we'll have his information. Um, for leadership film works and if we can help you in taking that next step in your leadership journey. So best of luck to all of you. You've been tuning into Next Steps to Leadership with your host, Dr. Stephen Oliver. You can find this show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our website, hrcvision.com. Thank you for your positive feedback, comments, questions, and for sharing the show with others.